When you start looking at state management with Flutter, you'll quickly come across the provider package. And more specifically, you'll see code that is structured like this, where we have our root widget, uh, which returns a multi-provider that has multiple streams. And then somewhere, anywhere deep within our widget tree, we can access those streams by using provider of and passing the same uh, widget type. So in this video, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, why we use this code structure and just walk through the steps uh, in a very slow and logical manner uh, to get to this conclusion. And in doing so, you'll have a deeper understanding of how you can do state management within Flutter. Because I think when you come in to just this specific code structure, uh, there are a lot of questions that have been left unanswered and you're not entirely sure why you're using this. So let's just start at the beginning and assume that we have a couple of streams. So here I have a user model stream that is coming from Firebase Auth and a document model stream that is coming from Firestore. Uh, the assumption I'm making here is that I've got a couple of classes defined with uh, constructors from, from Firebase, which return uh, an instance of this model. So uh, essentially we have streams for these two models and they're called user stream and document stream. So the first thing you can do with a stream, and this is before we've even installed the uh, provider package, is you can use stream builder. So in my, in my code example here, I've got uh, a widget called big widget. And the assumption here is that it has a huge widget tree um, that it has to rebuild. So in this code structure, I'm basically, I'm using the stream builder and I'm passing in the document stream. And anytime there is a change to that stream, uh, this builder method is run and the entire um, big widget is being rebuilt. You'll notice that with the builder, I get access to an async snapshot document model. So in order to actually access my uh, the underlying model, I have to use uh, this value dot data. So dot data contains my document model. So with that, I can then access the document title within some child of the big widget. So the trouble with this is that every time there is a change to the stream, the entire widget tree of big widget is being rebuilt. And that could be quite expensive, certainly if you're only using a small portion of it. So let's just have a look at what happens um, when we start using provider. So this code here is equivalent to the above. So the entire big widget is going to rebuild whenever there's a change to the, to the document stream. So the difference is instead of using stream builder, I'm using stream provider. And then instead of manually sort of pulling out the data from that snapshot, that async snapshot, I'm using consumer. So consumer is just part of the provider package. So this basically is pulling out that data for me and giving access to a builder. So it's a slightly different structure. I've got a second child and, uh, and the builder there, but the end result is the same. The entire big widget is being rebuilt. So that doesn't really change anything, but we've, We've gone from having uh, just the built-in stream builder to the stream provider. And next up, we need to start thinking about how we can optimize this because we don't want big widget to rebuild at any point. So we know that the consumer widget uh, basically gets access to the stream within a stream provider uh, or any provider for that matter. So here, what we're doing is we're essentially swapping around uh, the consumer and the big widget big widget. So previously, uh, we had big widget as a child of consumer, but now we've put that consumer deep within the big widget tree, and we're only accessing it at the point we need to. So this means that when our stream changes, big widget does not rebuild. It, it only rebuilds uh, at this level here where the consumer is being used. So again, just remember, consumer is part of the provider package. So this widget is basically looking up the widget tree all the way up, getting access to the stream. And when there's a change, it then knows to rebuild. So straight away, we have a performance optimization here, and it hasn't really added much code to, uh, to our widget tree. So now we're going to um, assume that we're going to extract this widget. So uh, let's say the big widget is just looking pretty complicated. So we, we right click this, we refactor it, and we pull it out into its own little widget. We've called it title widget here. 
So with this, again, we can still use the consumer widget to pull out that uh, stream here just by accessing its model type. And so these, this is equivalent to the above. So we still get that performance benefit, but now our code's a little bit tidier. So now we start thinking, okay, we've got access to the document stream, but what happens when we want multiple providers, multiple streams? So we can nest the stream provider. So we have our document stream here, and then we have our user stream here. And then our title widget can then use Again, nested consumers, one to get the document model and a second one to get the user model. And we, we can return some, uh, some uh, we can make use of those streams deep within our widget tree. So you're probably thinking this looks pretty ugly and you're right, it is ugly because we're nesting. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, four, four nested widgets, which looks pretty ugly. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tidy up this nested stream provider here by using the multi-provider. So a multi-provider basically means we can provide an array of, or rather a list of providers, and then we just have a single child, which is our big widget. But we still at this point suffering from the same problem of nested consumers within our extracted widget which leads us to the final state of our code. By using provider of instead of consumer, we then get rid of the nesting at the deep level. So this is the, this is generally the, um, the code that you come across, like I said earlier, when you start looking at the provider package. And I hope that by going on this short journey, uh, you understand why we're using this approach but certainly it can be useful to know that things like consumer are available because I'm, uh, they're not readily documented. Well, they're not, well, they are well documented, of course, but they're not um, prevalent in the examples online. And same with using a stream provider. You can use this anywhere within your widget tree. It doesn't have to be at the root level uh, as, as you might assume with uh, when you see this code. You could create a new stream provider somewhere else in your, your widget tree you can even use a multi-provider. And just like using theme of, you pass this, pass the context with provider of. So by passing the context, all that means is it's gonna work its way up the widget tree until it finds the nearest provider of the correct type. So uh, you can nest providers, you can use the consumer widget, and you can use the provider of widget as well. So there you go. I hope that has shed some light on the provider package within Flutter.